Tech League. Uh, my name is Jim Vazella, and you have just showed up for one hour of pure hilarity with two teams. Uh, what you have been doing and what you've been saying is just me hosting right now, but what you will be seeing is improv comedy, and that is made up of your suggestions. <laughs> And what we need from you is those suggestions in the chat. So I want to practice real quick with suggestions. If everyone could give me a noun, throw that on out there, uh, a person, a place, a thing, just start putting those in. Uh, I see uh, Blackhawks, one, two, three, four, five. Hello, uh, great, Connor, Strom, pet, banana bread, sword. Great, uh, it, sword makes me think of a location or a, uh, or a time like the Renaissance. Uh, what are some other times or locations uh, you might have gone to recently? So practicing with those, great. We've gone to, I see potato chip. Uh, that is a location uh, that holds strong in my heart. The 70s, the pizza parlor. These are all incredible suggestions. You have already done an incredible job. Uh, if you could type some one and twos in there, a uh, reason why I'm asking for 12s or ones or twos is because uh, those are a little bit of applause uh, from me to you and from you to me right now. You see, these suggestions are going to fuel our show for Snow Joke and for Channel Surfers. Uh, but first, Channel Surfers is going to go all Hollywood. We're going to take these suggestions, we're going to create our movie and maybe even eventually get to award season. Uh, but in order to do that, we need three crack writers, and those are Andrew, Clark, and Megan. They're going to come up on screen and been working hard on some scripts. Uh, they've been working so hard on some scripts. Uh, in fact, they loved uh, the suggestions from uh, Lisa Zenyi. Uh, I believe those uh, initials are L and Z. Uh, they enjoy the Roaring Twenties, but they love the initials L and Z. And they're actually going to create their script off of Ellen Z. Andrew, if you wouldn't mind uh, pitching us your first script. The Lemon Ziggler. The Lemon Ziggler. It's about a Ziggler who has to go on a lemon heist. <laughs> the Lemon Ziggler. Uh, I enjoy heist. I enjoy citrus. Andrew. Mwah. Masterpiece. Uh, Clark, uh, let's let's hear what you've had to say. I know you've been locked in a room writing forever. I I think I have written uh, my magnum opus here. Um, it's The Lonely Zucchini. Um, this is the dramatic comedy that tells the tale of when you attempt to garden, uh, but you can only grow one zucchini. The rest don't grow, just a lonely zucchini. A lonely zucchini. It, it sounds sounds like the story as old as time. Boy. Uh, and then, uh, Megan, uh, I, I see I see your script yes, took yes. you to a very, very dark place. Uh, um, would you mind yes. sharing? My movie will be called The Little Zip Zab. And it is about a little zip zab who is trying to find the way home. And I think it will get Amy Adams that Oscar at last. <laughs> Little zip zap. And anytime you can put Amy Adams in anything, it's wonderful. Uh, wow, I love all of these movies. Uh, however, I know we can't do all three. So we're going to put a little poll up there uh, so you, the audience, could choose which direction we end up going in. Uh, but to be fair, uh, in order to make that right choice, it's great to always hear that movie tagline uh, and a recap of that movie. So, uh, Andrew, uh, what was that again? The Lemon Ziggler, a little ziggle from left field park who has to go on a lemon heist. <laughs> and Clark? Uh, the Lonely Zucchini. It'll have you saying, aw, just one zook. <laughs> <laughs> and Megan. Little Zip Zab, Amy Adams for Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> Little zip that. Uh, Amy Adams, you are. Uh, Amy Adams makes me giggle in all things. Uh, it looks like our poll is coming down. It is really close. Lonely Zucchini and Little Zip Zap are neck and neck. Uh, but it seems like we're getting a lot of funding behind Lonely Zucchini. Uh, much uh, like the remake of the Beatles song, The Lonely Zucchini Hearts Club. Uh, but. Oh, there it is. 55% Lonely Zucchini. Uh, thank you all for your time. Uh, however, Clark, you created a masterpiece of a script. 
And I believe we should probably get that cast, don't you think? Absolutely. Uh, so in order to get this cast, first of all, thank you so much for agreeing to fund uh, Lonely Zucchini. Uh, we're going to need to uh, try out some people, figure out who would be right for this. Uh, we're going to have them do a scene from Lonely Zucchini. So can I get in the chat some suggestions of locations where Lonely Zucchini might be filmed? Uh, like a garden or a kitchen or an airplane. Who knows? Maybe they have to travel to get more zucchinis. Uh, so throw those suggestions in the chat uh, so that we can then do a scene. I'm going to have three friends come up here doing a scene. And at any point during the scene, someone else who wants to audition uh, can say, I can do better. Uh, and they'll give a suggestion of something they think they could do better. And if I like it, then I'll tell them to swap out in the scene. But if I don't like it, they don't get to try out their thing. Oh no, who knows if they'll be in Lonely Zucchini. Uh, so I am seeing uh, a Pizza Hut as a potential location to shoot this. So your suggestion is Pizza Hut. Oh, I wish more people came to my birthday party. Don't worry, honey. We have a surprise for you. Oh, Bert. <laughs> You're always. Oh my god! Hi, I'm Zucchini the Hut! <laughs> I'm here to make Pizza Hut healthy! It's your favorite character, remember? Of course, the healthy Pizza Hut mascot. Oh my god, how how have you been since we broke off the engagement? <laughs> oh, I've been I've been vine. Oh. <laughs> That's good. Oh, honey, I should tell you I used to be engaged to this person. You used but... to be engaged to the zucchini and you didn't tell me? I was very lonely and I just he was there. Whoa, that's... You make it sound like zucchinis are bad. Zucchinis are great. We're good with fritters and relationships. Don't shove that healthy stuff down my throat. We weren't right then. We weren't right now. I could be fried as well. I can do better. Yes? Uh, I can list more things that zucchinis would be good at. I want to see it. Okay. I would be good in a stir fry and oh, on I a bet. bread... And uh -huh. on someone's eyeballs if they're stressed out at night. I would I be bet. good in an omelet. I'd be good <laughs> in a beer, I think. I've never tried it. How could you settle for this and not even tell me? And you just told me the zucchini was your favorite without telling me any backstory? Oh, you want some backstory? You want some backstory, Bert? Here's a backstory. I went to college for an art degree, and now we're having dinner on our anniversary in a pizza hut. How's that for a backstory? I can do better. Yes. I can give a better backstory than Nick can. I want to see that. <laughs> you want to call this a backstory? I got my degree in art. I was going to see the world. I was going to go to Amsterdam and grab a joint and a cappuccino and, and raise little, little babies of my own. But then, I, but then I met the zucchini. And when we met... I love just took us away. Just cut it out. I can't handle it. Just stick that Detroit style pizza right in your mouth. I can do better. Yes. I can cut a scene better than David. Uh, yeah, let's see it. <laughs> Zucchini, cut this action. Take one. I feel attacked as a zucchini that someone would be cutting around me. <sighs> Zucchini should just be cut out of life. This is why zucchinis aren't allowed. Zucchinis. Really I agree to, with them. I can do better. Yes. I could stroke my hair farther away from the camera than Andrew. Uh, yeah, I want to see that. <laughs> you see what you've done, Zucchini? Okay, You're making I... them stroke their hair until it's falling right out. 
Look, I know. I'm, okay, I've been to a lot of therapy. I've been doing a lot of work on myself. And like, I thought we'd all move past this. And you asked me to go to dinner with you after you call our engagement off. And like, I just, why am I here? You know, no one wants to put me in a beer. Who, what am I kidding? Who am I kidding? It's, it's cucumbers that go on the eyes. I, I, I don't even know why. Incredible. Thank you so much. I feel like I have seen what I need to see in order to cast this show. Um, but I do feel like uh, my script might need some edits. So uh, I'm going to let someone take over that. Okay. Thank you, Clark. So, hey, everyone. I'm Nick, a development intern here at Channel Server Productions. So... As we know, studio executives like to rehash the same old stuff over and over again, expecting to find a new gem. So to get us started, can you start throwing in the chat some genres that you would see for TV and film? Whether that be horror, Western, special episode of a sitcom, anything like that, just to get us inspired. So for this next segment, we're gonna have some actors do some scenes from uh, a pivotal scene from the Lonely Zucchini. And we're gonna be applying some of your studio notes as the executives so we can try to make the next thing. So awesome, we're getting some good stuff. Uh, in fact, let's get our three actors up from this pivotal scene, this climax scene of the Lonely Zucchini. This is the thing that could maybe get us to award season. So uh, my actors are here, we are ready to go. guys. You know the drill. Uh, this uh, this scene is going to take place in a uh, it's going to take place on Bourbon Street, and we're going to start uh, we're going to start from there. You're, this is the Bourbon Street scene. You all are aware you've you've gotten to your sides. So uh, take it away. Barkeep, barkeep. No, I could hear you. I'm I'm right across from you. Oh, oh, oh barkeep. Uh, patron, patron. I need two zucchinis on the rocks, buffalo tray style. Listen, buddy, you're ordering all wrong. Let me help you out here. It's not barkeep anymore. It's hey, bartender. Give me two zucchinis on the rocks right now and serve it up fast. Uh, you know what I heard from neither of you? Merely a please. A please would have been great, especially when I'm dabbling in zucchinis. You see, zucchinis are hard to find now due to supply chain demand through all throughout New Orleans. You know, Barkeep, the last time I said please to someone, the last time I said please to someone, I also said thank you. Yeah, can't you see he's struggling here? You don't need a please. You'll get that thank you at the end. And maybe you're welcome when you heat pigs. But maybe you won't. Maybe you won't get your welcome. Yeah. Your rudeness has no bounds. And with that, you sound like a jazz. Cut, cut, cut. Okay, okay. So obviously we see why this was the scene that they gave us notes on. So... Friends, the execs from higher up, they want to see this scene redone, and it's going to be, um, this is a rom-com now, so take with that as you will, let's take it from the top, all right, and action. Hey, uh, hey, barkeep. <laughs> Boom, oh, <laughs> oh, hi. Hey. Uh, 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 I'm a new, uh. I'm a new real estate investor in town, and uh, my wife just died. Oh so, my goodness, uh, you're so my type. Yeah, totally. I'm everyone's type. Look, <laughs> if you could help me out, I could use uh, two cucumbers, zucchinis, two cucumber zucchinis on the rocks, buffalo tray style. <laughs> hey, man. Uh I know you're going through a hard time, but that's not how you win over a woman. Oh. Order like this. Hey, what's up, Doc? I'll have two carrot, I mean, two zucchini martinis and serve them up cold like my wife. Wow, I'm so perplexed. They both make an argument. Sure, their manners are not exactly there, and they didn't ask me about my interest. But, boy, I feel as if 
I could have a future that lasts only six months with either of you. Why does it have to be either of us? Why can't it be both? All right, cut, cut. Thank you. Thank you for going on that journey for us. Uh, believe it or not, we got some more studio notes from that. So, uh, guys, we're trying this again, and this is a remake of a remake. So, uh, we're going to be doing uh, this is Jurassic Park 3, specifically the third one. We're all familiar. So, if we can see this scene again on Jurassic Park 3, that'd be great. Thank you. Action. Well, I, I, well, first, God God creates dinosaurs. Uh, man creates bourbon. Bourbon creates zucchini. Zucchini creates drink. Drink creates dinosaur at bar. Must pour faster. Must pour faster. They're testing the bartenders. They're learning. <sighs> Shot. Da na 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 na. Thank you for that. All right, uh, guys, you're being real troopers. I got one final one that the execs say they, they, this is the one they said we'll bring it home and send it to the box office. So we need to see this. Uh, they're asking for the silent film, um, but they wanted to twist it that this is uh, when life support gets pulled. Um, they're going for a grittier tone in this one. So, if, yeah, if you can just uh, give that a shot for us, please. Thank you. And action. Hey. Finn. All right, guys, thank you so much. We're going to send that, and you know what? They'll fix it in post if we need to. So we're going to move on. Uh, sounds like oh we got a panel out here so let's take that away all right thank you all welcome to cs movie critics we have assembled a wonderful panel of expert movie critics but before we get started if you could please ask some questions for our critics critics down in the chats about our last scenes like what did you think of the lighting in the last scene or if you have questions about any sort of movie at all for our movie critics like should jurassic park have won an oscar go ahead and ask that in the chat right now but let's meet our movie critics who are going to be answering your questions let's get them up on screen oh megan you you look please introduce yourself yeah, hi, I'm Megan. I'm your ex-stepmom, Davey. Don't act like you don't know me, okay? And my doctor did say I have to continue eating tater chips the whole time or else my sodium levels, honey, they will get low, okay? So that's what I'll be doing. You got it. Uh, uh, Clark. Yes, uh, so I have only made uh, one film, uh, but it made my mother cry, so I think I am the expert here. Oh, what a wonderful background. And Nick. Yeah, what up? I'm a uh, Kurt. I'm a finger uh, shoe model, and I like to walk through life with confidence. So I bring that perspective into my film criticism, and it exudes right now. Thank you. Let's get to our first question, shall we? Mm -hmm. What is the motive? The best motivation for an actor? Megan, would you like to start? Oh my God, David, do you remember that one movie? where Natalie Portman got pregnant and she had the baby in the Walmart. Like, oh my God, are you serious? Like, that was amazing. You know what I'm saying? Yep. yep. I miss you, honey. Call me more. Yeah. Call her. Good luck. 
Yes, uh, so I would not make a film without a sad baguette on set. I think that is really all you need. Hmm, yeah. interesting. And Nick? Yeah, um, I think as long as an actor moves with purpose, you can kind of tell what they're thinking, what's, who they are, where they've come from, where they're going. Like, uh, I don't, I, the Crocs did not find me, I found them. You know, and that's how I, I live my life, and I think that's how actors need to come into their characters for their lives to embody them. Astute observation on the direction. Uh, let's go with, what diet did the star go on to fit into that dino suit? And Clark, would you like to take us away on that one? Yes, uh, two words, uh, sensual crepes. Hmm, yes. Good point. And Nick? Um, I heard that there was doing some kind of thing with like a Livestrong like sponsorship that like you walk a lot and then you eat a lot and then you're big as a dino. Okay. So I think that's what I know. Just you walk, you eat and you live your life. So true. And Megan? Oh my God. Okay. So, you know, I've been on like a thousand and one diets, but I just discovered, did you know, honey, you can get more than one type of apple. There's like more than one. There's Fuji's and Gala's and honey crisp. I didn't even know. And you know what? Now that I do know, I do have a couple recipes in the back pocket. Davey, come over for dinner sometime. I'm begging you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and let's finish up with this. Um, what is the best advice for aspiring filmmakers? Nick, would you like to take it away? Absolutely. Um, especially in terms of lonely zucchini, as I think you need to find your other vegetable friends to go through life with. You know how sad a zucchini is on its own? Throw in a squash, throw in some broccoli, throw in with a, the surprise vegetable. Um, um, a, 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 a Twinkie is a surprise vegetable. A lot of people didn't know that. Find your Twinkie and you're going to have a good life. Good point. Megan, let's hear it. Yeah, okay, I guess probably just watch that Natalie Portman movie because that was good. Great answer. Uh, and Clark, finish your I love up. you. Yes, uh, uh, if you would like to be a filmmaker, you need to be uh, like Escargot, uh, just slazard in garlic. Is that is how you make film? Mm -hmm. All the wonderful answers. And let's take it away to uh, the award ceremony. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you, team. In fact, I, I am so honored uh, that this entire process has brought along so many awards. Uh, now that we're at the award uh, season, we've got some people to thank or things. Uh, for instance, if you would have typed a banana earlier, uh, I might have said, wow, this is so unexpected. But without the support of banana, I might have split. <sighs> Mm. And all of that laughter I heard from your homes is the correct sound and response. So I'm going to welcome the entire team up onto screen now. Oh, all of them have won awards during this process. And uh, most recently, uh, they really want to thank Swords. Uh, so we've won the award and we want to thank Swords. Uh, we'll start with Clark. Yes, I... I would love to, to thank Swords uh, for this award. Uh, without them, I really would have never gotten to the point. <laughs> Andrew. Hey, uh, I'd like to not thank Swords because you were trying to fence me in there. And when you're trying to fence in a star, we win awards, so thank you, Swords. Mm -hmm. uh, David. I would like to thank everyone for this award for Swords because my mom told me I would never get anywhere because I wasn't very sharp. <laughs> Megan. Yeah, oh my God, thank you so much. Um, thank you to Swords for making sure we all got e-paid. <laughs> uh, Nick. Oh, I wanna thank you all so much for this award, especially for the sword. You really know how to find a diamond in the rock. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have been chosen. Uh, and now I will choose a new thing. Uh, and I'm going to take potato chips. Uh, potato chips. Uh, David. I'd like to thank this ward for potato chips. 
because my director was pretty salty to me and I never thought we would ever make it through the film. Mm -hmm. Hey, Andrew. Hey, uh, I would like to thank uh, Potato Chips for this award. After this, we're going out and getting lazed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Clark? Yes, I, I would like to thank each and every one of you um, for this Potato Chip Award. You're the best spuds a guy could ask for. <laughs> Uh, I would I would actually like to thank um, thank all of you for this potato chip award. I know I have not been easy to work with. In fact, I might have ruffled all the feathers. Uh, and uh, excuse me, uh, Nick. I believe you won uh, one potato chip award. Yes. Oh my gosh! Thank you for noticing. Um, yes, everyone. I want to thank you so much for this potato chip award. I really wish I could say, but I got a dip. Sorry. <laughs> and we've got time for one more award, and that is uh, none other than the Roaring Twenties. We won the Roaring Twenties Award, uh, and uh, I know that Clark uh, has won a Roaring Twenties. Yes, ah, oh, I am so grateful for this Roaring Twenties Award. Y'all might even say that I'm jazzed. <laughs> and Megan? Oh my god, I literally cannot believe I just won this Roaring Twenties Award. I am so flabbergasted <laughs> and nick oh uh, everyone thank you so much for this roaring 20s award i mean i feel it's such a high i feel like the only thing after this is like a great depression <laughs> oh, oh that makes me so sad because they're playing us off a great job team i'm happy we won all the awards uh but that is our time here on this award show we have been channel surfers uh but now you've got snow jokes uh coming up right now marks our one year snow anniversary so we are so excited to be celebrating with you right now in the chat i need to know some of your favorite ways to celebrate what do you do with your friends what do you do with your family uh we also need to know some of your favorite um we are loving this chilly weather what are some of your favorite things to do in this nice fall weather let's put those in the chat right now uh we are so excited to be here celebrating with you Let's go ahead and get the rest of my friends on screen who are going to be celebrating with me for this first game. Amazing, amazing, we love it. All right, we are going to be uh, playing Try That On for size. Um, so I'm actually gonna choose two of you to start off with. We're gonna start with Sarah W and Ron. We're gonna just play some Try That On for size with the two of you. You all are going to be drinking some hot cocoa. Let's see it. I'm drinking some hot cocoa. Try that on for size. I'm reading tea leaves out of my cup. Try that on for size. I'm cleaning my molars. Try that on for size. I'm gargling with clean water. Try that on for size. I'm doing an appropriately aged shot at the appropriately aged bar. Try that on for size. I don't think so. <laughs> um, what's an I, um, Your math's not working out for me. Get off this stage. Whoa. All right, let's get Isabella up here. All right, Ron, Isabella, uh, Ron, you're kicking us off. We are trick-or-treating. 
I'm trick or treating. Try that on for size. Free sample at the food cart. Try that on for size. I'm doing aerobics. Try that on for size. Lunch lady, this school lunch was very adequate. Try that on for size. I'm showing my mom my thumbs after I picked my nose. Try that on for size. Oh, come on, Ron. You don't pick your nose with your thumbs. Everybody knows that. All right, let's get your finger. Pointer finger, I know. I only use my pointer finger. Who else do I have here? Cat, are you coming on? Beautiful, beautiful. All right, I think this is our last round. This one's for the championship. Uh, let's see. You all are, uh, we are jumping in some leaves. Try that on for size. Me starting? Yes, you starting, Isabella. I'm jumping into leaves. Try that on for size. I have a new spot on Broadway. Try that on for size. Is this Bob Fosse? I think this is Bob Fosse. Try that on for size. Oh, Bob Fosse goes on Broadway. That is a repeat, Isabella. If there's no one else coming up, or do we have any other friends coming in? Kat, you are our winner of our very first game as we are celebrating our one year snow anniversary. So sorry. Hi, folks. That was just lovely. But uh, I'm here now, Ian McKellen, and it's real nice to be here with you. Now, I know you're very excited for this very, very special audition that we have that you get to view today for Friendship Island. I know you've heard of our sister show, Love Island, but it's everything that is, and it's all PG. So it's all viewers. We're really raking in the dough here. It's really, the producers are smart. So we're very excited to have you all at this special audition. Now, if you in the chat could send some questions that you have for our auditionees, that way I know who you want to see on Friendship Island, and I know who you don't want to see on Friendship Island, right, babe? Okay, so my lovely darling auditionees, if you could all join me in the audition room, that would just make my heart flatter. Uh, and in the meantime, I'm going to take a look at your headshots and um, get these questions right up as you come in beautiful bring in those questions my sweet sweet audience members make sure this is for your newest season of friendship island right it has to be perfect now i'm gonna have all you loves go around introduce yourselves in one sentence give me your name and we're gonna we're gonna start with the last uh in the hat and glasses just introduce yourself right quick babe. Oh, well gee my name is Sally, but I'm not sure how I got here. I'm a, I'm a librarian from 1954. Right, that's that's a bit crazy, isn't it? Okay, that'll be fun to unpack. Uh, now, darling, in the po in the ponytail with the scrunchie, could you explain yourself? Yeah. Um, hi, my my name is uh, TJ Max. Um, after my favorite store because I I'm a uh, I'm a designer friend, but at a at a discount price. Right, real high self esteem there. Okay, and darling, in the with the flowers. What's your name, Lass? Hi, I'm Meadowlark with a C because it's French, and I am all about everything love, and I just want to bring love and peace to the world. Wow, we really have a very fascinating bunch of folks here for Friendship Island. I'm sure they're all very, very normal. Right. So first question for our panelists for the newest season of Friendship Island. If your house was on fire, what would be the three things that you would save and elaborate on just one real quickly for me? So, um, Miss a 1950s uh, transplant. Yeah, go ahead. You start us off. First things first. After calling my local fire brigade, and stop dropping and rolling, which was invented last year. We were the spearheads of this. Hopefully it works. Let me know. Um, I would save my little dog spot. I would also save um, my copy of the Canterbury Tales. And of course I would also save um, my pantyhose, because you just can't leave the house or make friends with bare legs. Right, right. 
My legs definitely aren't bare right now. It is the internet, you know. <laughs> right, so, um, ponytail, darling, uh, you go ahead. I mean, how do you save one thing when your, you know, house is surrounded by everything from your favorite store, TJ Maxx? I mean, I went there the other day and I found this little tiny shoe in housewares. And, I mean, even though it was in the wrong spot, it's it's good enough for, like, a candle holder or I mean what about a, a pool noodle and yes it's October but I mean how do you not save this there's just there's just too many things to choose from I I, I, I don't I don't I, I don't I don't know I'm mean, oh, definitely both of these should be prepared to have a hoarder in the villa right okay uh, and flower lady your turn well I would um Actually, I would only save one thing in the house, and that's a flower pot. And the rest of the things are outside the house. Uh, some dirt, and then also some grass to replant, so we can replant new love and new life. Right. Sweetheart, are you doing okay mentally? Some of it seems a little a, a little rubbish, if I'm being honest. But in front of Ireland, everyone is welcome to be whoever they want to be, even if it's... Flowers and the 1950s and TJ Maxx, right? I'm Ian McKellen. Our final question for these panelists. One more question for you lot, and then I'm gonna cast the show and your dreams will be made, or maybe crushed, who's to say? Final question is, what letter would you remove from the alphabet and why? Let's go in the same order, shall we? Oh, please miss. Mr. Person, host, don't ask me to remove a letter from our beloved English alphabet that comprises the books, that comprise my library, that is my second home. Because you said my first home burned down, so now I'm living in the library with oh. these books. If I were to remove a letter, gosh, I, golly geez, I just don't even know the chaos, the chaos that would create. Please, please, I already picked three things to save. Don't, don't ask me to cast away a letter. You make a very compelling point, darling. Remind me after the audition to introduce you to McDonald's, okay? I think you'll get a kick out of it. I really do. Um, next. Um, so I think that um, I would probably get rid of um, the, let the letter three. I also got this at TJ Maxx. Mm -hmm. it, it was discounted because it's, it's missing the three. Right. But I, I think that I, I would get rid of this because, you know, it, it's mine is missing the three, so. Right. God, I do love the people that reality TV brings me. And finally, you. Well, I only need five letters. Uh, no, four letters. So that's L-O-V-E, and I don't need the rest of them. Because with those four letters, anything can be accomplished. Uh-huh. I, I have a number for a wonderful therapist that I think you really get a kick out of. But that's the audition, darlings. So you've all done wonderful and you all lot will find out on the next season of Friendship Island, who made the cast? Spoiler alert, it's me. It's the Netflix phenomenon that's been sweeping the whole globe where desperate people compete in childhood games for riches. This is Squidward Game. Can I bring on my contestants for today's challenge? We are looking for Nate, Sarah, and Katarina. Welcome, victims, I mean contestants. In today's episode of Squidward Game, we will be playing a game. It'll be a childhood game, and Katarina's going to have to guess all these games. They have to guess the childhood game, 
the tool they will use, and their celebrity alliance, Katarina. Get out. We will bring you back in. So, everybody in the chat, I need you to type out what childhood game will our contestants be playing in Squidward game today, such as tic-tac-toe or red light, green light. Then, what tool will they be using? Maybe it's a hammer, or maybe it's a block of cheese. And lastly, who is their celebrity alliance? Maybe it's Dolly Parton or Lady Gaga or character actor Sam Rockwell. Do we know what our game is? Squidward, our game is going to be Freeze. Freeze! And what tool will they be using? They will be using a frisbee. A frisbee. And who will be the celebrity alliance? The celebrity alliance will be Madonna. Madonna. All right, contestants, are you ready for me to bring back Katarina? Let's bring her back. Now remember, in Squidward game, anything goes. If you win, you'll win millions. And if you lose, you'll be eliminated. <laughs> Let's make sure Katarina is back on screen. Contestants, any questions? All right, I hope you're ready because we do not take Squidward game lightly. All right, you have two and a half minutes starting now. Hey, I feel cold in here. I can't move. Oh my gosh. Oh, this reminds me of our days of freeze tag. <sighs> Okay, um, yes. Okay. Yeah. But, it, but it's not just that. It's not just remember, that. Remember when we used to throw discs around? Yeah. Discs! Yeah. Oh my gosh, oh, my oh frisbee freeze yeah. tag! Yeah, and um, okay, so this game is going to be really hard, but you know, don't cry for me. Yeah, um, you know, Papa don't preach. We're in trouble here. Oh my gosh. Madonna. When we played it with Madonna. Yeah. Congratulations, contestants. But first, let's reiterate. What childhood game are you playing with? What tool and with what celebrity alliance? Um, we are playing freeze tag with frisbees with Madonna. Congratulations, contestants. You have made it on to the next round of Squidward Game. Don't sleep with your eyes closed. Hello, everyone. This is Arnold Wall here at the Tonys. Oh, yes, and I'm so excited to be hosting with you. My name is Martini, and I'm all shook up to be here tonight. Uh, well, Martini, what do we have at tonight's Tony Awards? Tonight's Tony Awards is going to consist of a musical that has never been done before. So if you can please put your suggestions in the chat of a musical that's never been done before, like, oh, uh, my dad, the dog, or, you know, um, Spoons the Musical. Oh, Anything. I love that. Yeah. I love I'm that. Making a, I hope that one wins next year. Uh, me too. It's got yeah. my vote for sure. Yeah, of course. Okay, so let us look and see what we have here. Okay, the musical that has never been done before is going to be Peanut Butter No Jelly. Oh, my... the tragic tale, peanut butter, no jelly. It will rip your heart out. Okay, and let's get the actors on stage. It starts in a kitchen. I can't bear the not sight of it. I, 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 I'm supposed to see it, and it's not, I don't see it. It's, it's. It's just not, it's not 
not there. There's nothing to see. Are you looking for the peanut butter? Maximus, you've been hiding the peanut butter. You do know I do love it so. Would either of you like a fingerful? All right, this is my favorite part. It's called, Do You Want a Fingerful? And it is a very fast patter song between the three. Fast and delicious. Would you like a fingerful, fingerful, fingerful? Would you like a fingerful, fingerful now? I don't want a fingerful, fingerful ever, ever. I don't want a fingerful never from you. I do, I do. Please give me a fingerful. I do, I do. Give it to me now. I will give you two fingers full of peanut butter because you are now so lovely to me. Mm. I, I understand what we are doing. I see it clear. But when you keep the peanut butter far, it is near. It is near to my heart, just like both of you. But come on, put your fingers in and get some peanut butter. Oh, and you know, I love this part. You know why? Do you know I why? Don't. It, it's because it's because he puts the peanut butter on his nose and then he sings a song called My Nosy Peanut Butter. Oh, My Nosy it, Peanut Butter. And do you know exactly what style of song that is? Um, the, the style of the song is going to be rock. Exactly. I'm putting peanut butter on my nose. Come lick it off. I'm putting peanut butter on my nose. I also put it down on my toes. I love peanut butter. How about you? I love peanut butter, but I'm not a dog. I put peanut butter on my dog's nose to take their medicine. And that's just not me. You make a fair point. You make a fair point with your beautiful music. But I'm just not convinced of peanut butter yet. I, I missed it so much that I just, I learned to get on without it. And here we have the final ballad. I learned how to get on without peanut butter. I learned how to get on without peanut butter. I thought I was not strong enough. I knew I was not strong enough. But now that I'm here, now that I'm sure, peanut butter is no more. Oh my gosh, that was such a tearjerker. <laughs> in your head. It really um, does. <laughs> I'm gonna hope that this is gonna win. I'm crossing my fingers. Thank you to all the lovely performance of Where Is My Peanut Butter? Hello, Simon Carl here. I'm ready to start my own new show called Simon. I will be the only judge. I will be the only person there, except for my contestants. So what I need you to put into the chat right now is some of the activities that you did at summer camp, you know, like roasting marshmallows or maybe making a macrame purse. So put those in because what we're gonna do, we're gonna go head to head with my contestants. They will have to, through actions and words, build you a story based on what each one says as they go. So if I could get up first, Daniela and Nate. Howie, do we have? Rock climbing. Rock climbing. Nate, we'll start with you. I'm rock climbing. I'm rock climbing and I'm taking a sip of water. I'm rock climbing, and I'm taking a sip of water, and I'm reaching into my chalk bag. I'm rock climbing, I'm taking a sip of water, I'm reaching into my chalk bag, and I'm doing the maracas. I'm rock climbing, 
taking a sip of water, reaching into my chalk bag, during the maracas and falling. I'm rock climbing. I'm taking a sip of my water. I'm. Oh, Daniela, I'm so sorry, but you <laughs> fell off the rock face. Mate, you will continue. Give me Ariel to challenge Nate. I'm ready. I'm ready. Heidi. Yes. What do we have? X throwing. Nate, we're starting with you. It's axe throwing. I'm axe throwing. I'm axe throwing and taking a picture of it. I'm axe throwing, taking a picture of it and smiling. I'm axe throwing, taking a picture of it, smiling, and then grabbing my friend to throw an axe. I'm axe throwing, taking a picture of it, smiling, grabbing my friend to throw an axe, and throwing my friend. I'm throwing an axe, taking a picture of it, smiling, grabbing my friend to throw an axe, and then throwing my friend, and then I'm taking a picture of my friend. <laughs> um, I'm axe throwing. Oh, Nate, to... Nate, <laughs> Nate, my friend, you delayed too long. <laughs> You're going to have to leave. Uh, Ariel, you will move on into our final round against Isabella. Bring it. Sophia, suggestion. Choreographing a cheer. Choreographing a cheer. Starting with you, Ariel. I'm choreographing a cheer. I'm choreographing a cheer, and then I'm gossiping with the girls after practice. I'm choreographing a cheer, gossiping with the girls after practice, then flipping my hair around. I'm choreographing a cheer, and then I'm gossiping with the girls after practice. Then I'm flipping my hair around, then I'm crying in the corner. I'm choreographing a cheer, then talking with the girls afterward, flipping my hair around, crying in the corner, then releasing butterflies. I'm choreographing a cheer, then I'm gossiping with the girls after practice, then I'm flipping my hair, then I'm crying in the corner, then I'm releasing butterflies, then I take a selfie. I'm choreographing a cheer, gossiping with the girls afterwards, crying in a corner, releasing butterflies, and then I'm flipping my hair, and then I'm also taking a selfie, and then after I selfie with my hair, I'm running for class president. Listen again, I'm choreographing a cheer. I'm gossiping with the girls after practice and I'm flipping my hair and then I'm crying in the corner and then I'm releasing butterflies and I'm taking a selfie. And then I forgot. And it looks like Ariel is going to be our winner. Ariel, congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. You are welcome. Hello everyone, yes, I am here. It is me, Teresa Caputo, the Long Island Medium. Good to see you. In the chats, please give me something I would find in the bottom of your backpack. Something I would find in the bottom of your purse. Because today, me and my friends, we are gonna tell your fortunes. We are gonna tell your future. We're gonna do it. Uh, so, for example, if I was to find a mirror, a mirror in your purse, I would say, oh, I see a lot of reflection in your future. See something like that. So give it to me. Give me all your chats and let me bring my friends out. My friend fortune tellers, my, uh, my fellow mediums, come on out to play. Oh, yeah. You know, in these unprecedented times, we're finding a lot of hand sanitizer in your future. A lot of hand sanitizer. My buddy, Isabella, please tell their future. Okay, um, so I see a lot of hand sanitizer in your future. It looks like you're gonna have a clean sweep at work too. Oh, oh Sarah, Sarah, give us the hand sanitizer in the future. 
Of course. So I see a lot of hand sanitizer in your future, and it's okay. It means you're clean of all robbery. You won't go to jail this time. Good for you. Beautiful. Nate, Nate, one more hand sanitizer for us. Um, I see you got a lot of hand sanitizer in your future. It's okay. You got your future in the palm of your hand. Oh, love it. Love it. Good things are coming. Daniela. Our next person has used gum in their future. Used gum. You are going to have used gum in your future. I'm so sorry to tell you every situation from now on is going to be extremely sticky. Ooh, right. sorry about that. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Ariel, used gum, used gum. Oh, uh, you got a lot of used gum in your future. You're going to get unwrapped a lot. A lot of unwrapping. <laughs> A lot of unwrapping. Uh, and speaking of wrapping, Isabella, we've got a mint wrapper. A mint wrapper. A mint wrapper. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, let me tell you, with that little mint wrapper you got there, oh, things are going to get a little staticky and a little loud. Maybe don't go into a theater and see a very dramatic play. That sounds extremely specific. Whoo, Sarah, a mint wrapper. You're gonna have a lot of mint wrappers in your future, but it's okay, because just like T-Pain, they are fresh and, and spicy. You're gonna date T-Pain in the future. He's here for you and he loves you very much. Also very specific, who knew? The mint wrapper. Uh, Nate, Nate, someone's got loose change in the future. Loose change. Um, I see you got a lot of loose change in your future, uh, but... I'll spare you a penny for your thoughts. Daniela, loose change. Okay, so you're gonna have a lot of loose change in your future. Don't stick with that dummy, okay? Men are a dime a dozen. Preach, preach, love it. Uh, Ariel, someone's got buttons. I, they got buttons in their future. What's that about? Tell us. I see you got a lot of buttons in your future, and uh, uh, you're going to have a lot of trouble keeping it together. Oof. I don't like the way that sounds. Whew. Isabella, buttons. All right. Well, I see you have a lot of buttons in your future. Just when things seem they're always going right, all of a sudden it's going to look like they're going left. Oh, gosh. These buttons are brutal. Uh, Sarah. I got a specific one for you. Someone's got granola bar crumbs in the future. Granola bar crumbs. Can you oh, tell us Lord. what's in the future? It's the Nature Valley bars. You got those granola bar crumbs in the bottom of your purse. And let me tell you, unlike your Nature Valley, your life is not crumbling. You're dating T-Pain and things are going well. Mm, good to hear, good to hear. Nate, what have you got to say about the granola, granola bar crumbs? You got a lot of granola bar crumbs in your future. Future's gonna be crummy. Oh, I don't like the way that sounds. Oh, uh, Daniela, you got another take on the granola bar crumbs? Um, I think I do, okay? You, there's gonna be many granola bars in your future. Um, I'm sorry, but just, just break it off with the negative energy. Just break it off. Mm, love it, love it. Uh, Ariel, I heard someone's got a pen. A pen in the future. What's that about? You know, I heard you got a lot of pens in your future. You're going to have to scribble your way through, but you'll make it out of there. Oh, yes. Uh, Isabella, a pen. Oh, a pen I see in your future. And oh. Oh, I think I see you meeting your, your true love at a fountainhead. It's going to be the big fountain in Central Park. And you know what I see in everyone's future? Tune in to Comedy Sports again next week. And for future shows, come back again and watch us. Thanks for tuning in to Snow Joke. Tonight, this has been fun.